This lecture is about understanding yield spreads. First, let's just talk briefly about uh, short-term interest rates. And in the United States, short-term interest rates are influenced by the Fed's interest rate policies. You have seen this before in economics when we talked about monetary policy. So this should be a quick refresher. But there are basically four major tools used by the central bank or the in, the in the U.S. the central bank is the Federal Reserve. So four tools that they can use to influence interest rate policy. The, the tools that are used more often are the discount rate and open market operations. Discount rate is the rate at which the central bank makes short term loans to, to commercial banks. Open market operations refers to the buying and selling of treasury securities by the Fed in the open market and by controlling the number of securities in the open market, the Fed can control short term interest rates. Bank reserve requirements refer to the requirements imposed on banks in terms of how much money they must retain. So for every hundred dollars of deposits, how much money must the bank retain versus how much can they lend out? Obviously, if reserve requirements are high, that means a high amount of money needs to be retained. That means that there is less money available and with less money available, the interest rates become high. On the other hand, if the reserve requirement is low, then the interest rates will also become lower. But this uh, the changing of reserve requirements happens very infrequently. And finally, uh, the Fed can try to persuade banks to tighten or loosen credit policies. This doesn't happen too often. Again, I went through this very fast. If you are not sure about this material, I suggest you listen to the lecture on monetary policy again, which is in the economics segment. So let's now understand the concept of the yield curve and specifically we are going to look at the US Treasury yield curve. So this is the US Treasury yield curve for August 2011. So about two months old and what we are seeing here is the following and let's just understand what we plot on the yield curve. The yield curve X axis is time to maturity. So this point over here represents bonds that have two years to maturity have a yield of about 0.25%. So and bonds with a very low time to maturity have a very, very low yield. So this indicates the state of the US economy right now. The economy is in some trouble and hence the short term interest rates are very low. So this is part of the Fed's efforts to get the US out of the current uh, economic difficulty that they are in. But if you look at the yields on longer term bonds, so the yield on the five year treasury securities is about 1%. The yield on seven year securities is about 1.5%. And when you go all the way out to 30 year securities, then the yield is about 3.5%. Now these yields refer to the overall return an investor is getting. So if an investor, so these are really the, the Y axis stands for yield to maturity. So if an investor holds on to a 30 year uh, bond uh, till maturity, then his yield to maturity given all the coupon payments and given all the, and given the principal, his yield to maturity is going to be 3.5%. So this is the current US Treasury yield curve. And the reason we are talking about the US Treasury yield curve first is because most of the spreads that we talk about, they will be with respect to the Treasury yield curve. Now, what are some common yield curve shapes? The, the shape that we just saw is called a normal or upward sloping yield curve. So again, the, the X axis was the time to maturity and the Y axis for a yield curve is yield to maturity. I have said this before, but a way to remember the, the what's on the Y axis 
is that the name of the curve will typically have what is contained on the y-axis. So this is called a yield curve. So this means that the y-axis is the yield. Here specifically it's the yield to maturity. X-axis is the time to maturity. So when you have a yield curve where bonds that mature after a longer time have a higher yield to maturity, this is called upward sloping or a normal yield curve. So in the US currently we have a normal yield curve. On the other hand, if short term interest rates are high and long term interest rates are low, then we have what's called a inverted yield curve or a downward sloping yield curve. Another scenario is where yields are flat across different maturities. So this is a flat yield curve and this is approximately the yield curve in Pakistan today. So we have rates on short term securities that are in the 12 to 13 percent range and yields on long term maturities are also in the 12 to 13 range. So this is a flat yield curve. And finally we can have something called a humped yield curve. A humped yield curve would be something like this essentially as the name implies. So this is a humped yield curve. So in this particular humped yield curve we have rates on short term securities is relatively low then we are expecting increase so there is a higher yield on intermediate term treasury securities and then longer term treasury securities show again a lower yield so you need to know these four names and you need to know what sort of a yield curve they represent Next, let's try and understand some of the theories that try to explain the shape of the yield curve. The most basic theory is called the pure expectations theory. And this theory simply says that the yield curve shape is based on expectations about future interest rates. So the way you might explain the upward sloping yield curve is by saying that if you expect interest rates to rise in the future, then you will have an upward sloping yield curve. The reason is straightforward. If, if short term interest rates are relatively low at say 2%, but you are expecting that in the future interest rates will be higher, then obviously the yield on longer term securities is going to be high. So this is called pure expectations because the shape of the yield curve is purely based on expectations about interest rates in the future. Can this theory be used to explain any shape of the yield curve? And the answer is yes. If you have a yield curve that is flat, then essentially what we are saying is that we have uh, that our expectation is that interest rates will not change in the future so in pakistan for example the expectation is that interest rates in the future will remain at about uh, in the in the 12 to 13 percent range so that actually might be changing so so let me take back the pakistan example but the core larger point is a flat yield curve would uh, a flat yield curve simply implies that yields that interest rates in the future are not changing and what about a downward sloping yield curve this would imply that interest rates in the future are coming down so the the bottom line here is the pure expectations theory can be used to explain any shape of the yield curve what about the liquidity preference theory Sometimes this is also called the liquidity premium theory. The idea here is straightforward. This liquidity preference theory simply builds upon the pure expectation theory. So this theory says that investors have a certain expectation about future interest rates. So let's take a simple scenario where expectation about future interest rates is that interest rates will not change. So that means that according to the pure expectations theory, we have a flat yield curve. However, according to this theory, investors demand a premium for holding longer term or longer maturity security. So these securities here are short maturity, so there isn't much of a premium. But for longer maturity security such as this one, there is a premium. So, so basically, we 
we look at what the pure expectations theory predicts and for longer maturity securities we add a certain premium and this premium is called the liquidity premium hence can the liquidity preference theory be used to explain any shape the answer is yes uh, so let's look at this scenario first so so in this scenario if the pure expectations theory is predicting a flat yield curve then we add a certain premium we'll have the liquidity preference theory explaining a slightly upward sloping yield curve what if the pure expectations theory is predicting a upward sloping yield curve then we would have liquidity preference explaining or giving us this curve where we just have a little preference uh, this liquidity premium added on can we have a downward sloping yield curve uh, based on this theory the answer is yes because you might have a situation where pure expectations theory is explaining a steep decline in interest rates and even when you add a premium you still have a downward sloping yield curve so the point here again is that the liquidity preference theory can be used to explain any shape of the yield curve and the third theory that we need to be aware of is called the market segmentation theory so according to the market segmentation theory we segment the bond market into different maturities so let's make a simple picture here so we define different segments let's say like the one year segment two year segment and then we have the intermediate segment say the four five year segment and then the the longer term segment say the 20 year segment and we say that interest rates in each segment are defined by the supply and demand for bonds of that maturity so in in this segment there is a certain demand there is a certain supply and the interest rate for that segment is determined by the intersection of supply and demand similarly in say this segment you have a certain demand you have a certain supply and the interest rate is determined by the intersection point so we do the same across different segments and then simply connect the points and that gives us our yield curve based on the market segmentation theory to understand why there are different segments you can just look at a simple example let's say that you have this long term segment that is dominated by say pension funds so clearly pension funds that have obligations after say 20 years will have a demand for securities that have a 20 year maturity so they will have a certain demand in this area and in this segment and then based on the based on the supply of securities in that segment we determine the appropriate rate so the market segmentation theory is is not really based on expectations but it is based on supply and demand in different segments a slight variant of the market segmentation theory is the preferred habitat theory so that simply says that while we have these different segments but a uh, investor can be convinced to move from one segment to another segment if the rates are good enough so for example some some investors such as the pension fund i talked about might have a preference for the 20 year segment but if in the 21 year segment they are getting a much better rate then they would be willing to invest in the 21 year segment again don't need to get into too much details as long as you've understood the core points i just made you are in good shape so treasury spot rates the simplest way to think of treasury spot rates is that these are the yields or the rates on zero coupon treasury securities so if you have a a one year treasury security the and no cash flow in between the yield on this security or the interest rate on this security is your one year spot rate if you have another zero coupon treasury security that gives you a uh, cash flow after 2 years the yield on this would be your 2 year treasury spot rate and so on now in a earlier lecture we talked about how this happens uh, 
the the treasury department doesn't really issue two year zero coupon bonds but through a process called stripping dealers effectively create two year treasury securities so if you have a two year zero coupon treasury security the yield or the discount the annualized discount rate on that security is called the two year spot rate now this is a very useful rate because this would be the most appropriate rate to discount a cash flow that you get two years from today so if you have a guaranteed cash flow of 100 that you are getting two years from today the most appropriate rate to discount is the two year spot rate and not the yield on the two year bond so that's an important point similarly if you are going to lock in your money today for a two year period then the appropriate rate to use for compounding again is the two year spot rate now let's talk about this concept of yield spreads the term spread implies a difference between two rates and the core idea is this whenever you are looking at the yield on a bond ideally you want to compare it against the yield on some other bond and the most frequently used other bond or benchmark bond is a treasury bond or a government bond the reason being that government bonds are considered free of default risk so you want to see how much higher yield you are getting on a bond above the treasury bond so let's say that we are talking about 10 year bonds and you want to get the absolute spread for a 10 year corporate bond let's say that we are looking at a 10 year corporate bond with a yield of 3% and let's say that currently the the uh, 10 year government bond or the treasury bond is giving a yield of 2.5% so the absolute spread would be defined as the yield the higher yield which is going to be the corporate the yield on the corporate bond minus the yield on the treasury which in my example is 2.5 percent so our absolute yield spread here is equal to 0.5 percent a, a related measure is called the relative spread the relative spread is simply equal to this absolute spread which is 0.5 percent so it is 0.5 percent divided by 2.5 percent so this is equal to 20 percent so that's your relative spread and finally the yield ratio is simply the yield of this bond which is sometimes called our subject bond divided by so three percent divided by the yield on the benchmark bond which is typically our uh, treasury bond so three percent over 2.5 percent which is 1.2 so this is pretty straightforward if you if you get this exam if you if you get this question on the exam then you should be able to nail it without a problem